Well, hello, we've got a pretty important video for you tonight. Quite a few people have been asking us to review the laws of logs. So here we go. Uh, take good notes. I've got quite a few new things to show you as well. So before we just talk about logs, we have to talk about what is a log. And believe it or not, a logarithm is just a fancy word for an exponent. That's all a logarithm is. A logarithm is an exponent. So I just want to be clear on our terminology. Our small number down here is called our base, and it's always written small. It's always equal to the exponent, and this is our answer. Now, for those of you having issues, again, we're just kind of worst case scenario here. We want to nail this on our exam. I've got a goofy little trick, and it's called DNA Dan. All right. If you always say to yourself, this is DNA, when you convert it to exponential, you always get Dan. I would get D to the A equals N. All right, and it's going to work every time. If you can convert this on your own, um, that's even perfect. But if you can't, again, we're getting desperate here. We want to make sure we nail these. This little trick will work. For example, this example they gave us, log base 2 of 8 equals 3. Okay, hopefully you know that you start at the base and you go outside back to the inside here. So I should get 2 cubed equals 8. Watch DNA Dan. If you say this is DNA, when you convert it to exponential, you should get Dan. D-A-N. 2 to the third equals 8. All right, so if that rule helps you, we're more the merrier, and uh, hopefully we can get these down. All right, so we'll go a little log to exponential form and see what you've got for a nice little review here. So again, I think it's obvious these are in log form. They all have the word log. Whether it's natural log or log, they have the word log. Exponential form, you should have an exponent. All right, so I'll do the first one with you, then you're on your own. Begin at the base outside and then inside. So I'm getting 2 to the third equals x. Again, here's my DNA Dan trick. DNA. 2 D-A-N. 2 to the third equals x. Pause it. Get the next two. All right. I hope those match up with what I have. And uh, if you've got questions, see us in class. Okay. This time I'm going backwards. So again, I'll do the first one with you, then you're on your own. I'm going to say this is log, this is my base, this is what it equals, and this is my exponent. And again, D, N, A, I should end up with Dan, 4 squared equals 16. Pause it, grab the next two. Check those out, hopefully you agree. I've got a log base 2 of 1 8 equals negative 3, and log base A of P equals M. So there's our converting log to exponential, and exponential to log. All right, our next little definition we need to have in our book is the change of base formula. Now, if you have that nice updated TI-84 calculator, and you know it by now if you have an updated calculator, you have a log base button. All right, if you can't find it, we can't keep showing you where it is, you have a catalog on your calculator. Okay, it's on the zero button. So if you hit second zero, you can go to the catalog, and if you scroll down to the L's, you'll see the log base button. And your log base button will allow you to put in any base. Okay, and again, that's if you have the updated calculator. Those of you without it, you don't have a choice. You have to memorize this change of base formula. All right, and here's the rule. The thing I say to myself is the base goes on the bottom. Okay, keep those B's together. The base goes on the bottom. So notice my base is B. So the base is on the bottom, log base, log B, and on top goes log A. So let's just practice um, a few change of base formulas. If I have log base 2 of 3, and I want to type that in the calculator, I have to type in log of 3 divided by log of 2. And all you're saying to yourself is the base goes on the bottom. Okay, and this is how you type it in your calculator. One more. And again, if you have the log base button on your calculator, that updated one, you can grab that. Um, but those of you without it, and which is many of us, we got to go change of base. Base goes on the bottom. 
log of 6 over log of 4. And again, that's how I would type it in my calculator. All right, time to get to the nitty gritty. Here are your log properties. There's only three of them, believe it or not. All right, so you only have to keep three things straight. And one we just used the other day, and that was this power rule. Okay, when you take the log, we said that exponent can come down in front. So we should be pretty good at that rule. So hopefully there's only two we have to keep straight. That's one, you're multiplying, you can split with addition, and notice every term gets a log. And when you're dividing, you can split with subtraction, and every term gets a log. All right, so what can we do with these log properties? Basically, we can do two things. We can condense and expand. And when we say condense, we are condensing all of our logs into one log. All right, so example one. I've got the quantity log x plus 4 log y minus 5 log z. And my goal is to make one log. So I just read left to right. All right, log x plus this log. Well, we just said addition turns to, look back at your notes there, multiplication. So I'm going to condense those two into one by saying that's really log x. And here's my power property. If it's down in front, it came from the exponent. y to the fourth minus 5 log z. Okay, so again, this is just a review, not getting too nitty-gritty here. But the addition turned to multiplication. And this 4 in front came from the exponent. All right, now I'm going to go one more step. I want only one log. All right, so now I see subtraction. Now I can say this is log. I have x, y to the fourth divided by this exponent. It's going to, or this number in front is going to go back to the exponent, z to the fifth. And my goal was to condense all of those logs into just one log. Number two, same idea. We have how many logs to begin with? Well, I count up three of them. My goal is to write this as one log. This is called condensing again. So just like you read left to right, we're going to do our math left to right. This 3 is in front, which means it came from the exponent. So I have log base 5. Notice they all have base 5. I'm going to say that's x to the fifth. The plus sign is going to turn this to multiplication. Uh, I have no exponent, so it's just going to be times y. The minus sign is going to tell me to divide that number in front goes to the exponent, w squared. And I'll just wrap that in parentheses, and there you have it. Okay, so condensing several logs into one log. All right, so let's go the opposite way. This time we're going to expand the log. Notice we only have one log, and we need to expand it. And by that, you're going to give every term that follows the properties a log. Okay, so any time you say times or divided by or you have a power, we're going to split it up with some log properties. All right, so I'm just going to read the top. It's just about reading out loud. To me, that says 2 times A times B. That means I'm going to have to stick a log here, here, and here. Everyone's going to get a log. So I'm going log of 2 times turns to plus log of a plus log of b. Now I'm saying divided by, so I'm subtracting. And when I do log of c cubed, what's going to happen to my cubed? Hopefully that's going to come down in front. So notice, every term got a log. Okay, I gave it to the 2, the a, the b, and the c. And then I just followed the properties. When I said times, I put a plus sign. When I said divided by, I put a minus sign. And my exponent came in front. All right, two. They put it into a little bit of a word problem, but it's the same idea. The speed of sound v at temperature t in degrees Kelvin is represented by this equation. Which expression is equivalent to log v? So again, all I want to do is expand. All right, so let's rewrite this. I have v equals 1087, and I have all of this. Again, we just talked about exponents. You can say this is really to the what power. What type of root is that called? I would say a square root. That means my root is 2 and my exponent is 1. All right, so I'm going to give everybody a log. I'm going to start with log v equals log 1087. And now I'm saying time, so I'm going to put a plus. Okay, this exponent belongs to this term, so I'm going to bring down my 1 half log. 
And now I'm saying t divided by this number. So I have to do 1 half quantity t minus log of 273. So let me just explain why, again, I have parentheses around this. Do you agree this 1 half goes to both the t and the 273? If I didn't have parentheses here, I wouldn't know to give that 1 half to both terms. So because, again, the 1 half goes to both of them, I need parentheses. Divided by, turn to subtraction, and there you have it. Everybody's got a log. Let's try one more. All right, again, a little wordy, uh, but we get the idea. The equation used to determine the time it takes a swinging pendulum to return to its starting point is given there. Um, represents the length of the pendulum in feet, and g equals 32 feet per second squared. So let's rewrite our equation. t equals 2 pi, the square root of l over 32. Express this form as a logarithm. So let's, I'll do one more step with you and then I'll let you go. t equals 2 pi, and again, I would raise all of this junk to the what power? Okay, it's a square root, so that goes to the 1 half. All right, pause it, expand it with logs, and see if we get the same thing. Check mine out. Uh, I got my log t, of course. This says 2 times pi, so I did log of 2 plus log of pi, because I'm saying times. And again, I'm reading this out loud. Then I say times again, so I'm putting plus. Exponent came down in front, 1 half quantity log of L minus log of 32. All right, if you didn't get those or you had a hard time, again, pause it, go back and get it. This is our last time reviewing log properties. All right, evaluating logs numerically. Now, this is not something we did before, so this is brand new to you, and I know it's supposed to be review, but this piece will be new. Given log base b of 2 equals x and log base b of 3 equals y, express in terms of x and y log base b of 18. So let's just slow down. We're given two pieces of information, and they want our answer to be in terms of x and y only. Okay, and my goal is to somehow rewrite this so that I use those givens. All right, so I'm going to start with log base b of 18. And basically, I need to see log base b of 2 and log base b of 3 at some point. So I start asking myself, how can I rewrite 18? Well, the first thing that pops in my head is, oops, 2 times 9. Would you agree with that? 2 times 9 is 18. Now here's the deal. I need to be using a 2 and a 3. Well, I've used the 2 for this part, so I would say that term's good, but I can't use 9. 9 wasn't in my givens. So then I said, okay, how can I rewrite 9? Well, I said 9 is really 3 squared. Okay, would you agree this is all the same thing as 18? 2 times 9 is 18, 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this, and instead of putting 18 in there, I'm going to say 2 times 3 squared. Now I'm going to use my log properties and expand that out. And I'm going to say this is log base b of 2 times turns to addition log base b of 3, and that exponent's going to go down in front. Now that I have that, I can use my givens. Notice, when I see log base b of 2, I'm going to replace that with x. So this just becomes x. When I see log base b of 3, I'm going to replace that with y. So I've got 2y. And that's my final answer, believe it or not. It said express in terms of x and y, and the only thing in my answers are x's and y's. And of course, a numerical constant's okay. So x plus 2y. Let's try another one. All right, so notice I've kept the same givens. Log base b of 2 equals x and log base b of 3 equals y, expressed in terms of x and y. This time I want log base b of 9 over 16. All right, so again, what sticks out to me is I've got to use the numbers 2 and 3 somehow. Okay, so let's rewrite 9. We said we know 9 is the number 3 squared. And 16 is the number 4 squared. Would you agree with that? 
I would think so. But now I can't use the number four because I need to be using twos and threes. So let's try to get 16 using the number two. Two to what power is 16? Two to the fourth. Okay, do you, so do you see how I tried? And I just had the wrong answer, so I had to try again. All right, now let's apply and rewrite this. So I have log base b, and instead of saying 9, I'm saying 3 squared. And instead of saying 16, I'm saying 2 to the fourth. Okay, so I just rewrote my 9, and I rewrote my 16. Now let's go log properties. Log base b of 3 squared, and that squared is going to come down in front minus, because it's division, log base b of 2 to the 4th, and that 4th is going to come down in front. Alright, so now the rule says when you see log base b of 2, you can replace it with an x. So I can replace this with an x, so I've got minus 4x. When I see log base b of 3, I can replace that with a y. So this piece is 2y. So my final answer is 2y minus 4x. Let's try another one. Log base 3, I'm sorry, log base b of 3 equals p, and log base b of 5 equals q. Express in terms of p and q. Okay, so I want to see p's and q's and maybe some numbers. Log base b of 9 fifths. All right, so my goal is to replace the 9 fifths with something. And again, I want to use the numbers 3 and 5. So when I see 9, what jumps in your head there? Hopefully 3 squared. And 5, I can actually leave because it says it's okay to use the number 5. So I'm using a 3 and I'm using a 5. So I'm going to replace it. Log base b, this is 3 squared over 5. And then we'll expand using log properties. Log base b of 3, that squared is going to come down in front, minus log base b of... 5. All right, so that rule said when you see log base 3, you can replace it with a p. So I can knock this out and put a p in its place. So I would say that's 2p. And when I see log base 5, b of 5, I can replace it with a q minus q. And there you go. All right, I'm going to do two more with you, then we'll give you one that we'll check in your notebook for a little quiz grade tomorrow. Log base log of 2 equals a and log of 13 equals b. Express in terms of a and b log of 26. All right, so my goal is to get rid of 26 using the numbers 2 and 13. Can you come up with what to do to get to 26? I would say 26 is the same thing as 2 times 13. So I'm going to replace that with 2 times 13. Now use your log properties, and I get the log of 2 times turns to addition, the log of 13. And that rule simply says when you see log of 2, you can put in place of it an A. And when you see the log of 13, you can put in place of it a B. So my final answer is A plus B. All right, so same numbers. Uh, this time I have to rewrite 8 over radical 13. All right. So what can you replace 8 with? And remember, you've got to use 2 or 13. Now, clearly 13 is not useful. How can you get to 8? I would say that's 2 cubed. And 13 is just going to be 13. So watch how I rewrite this already. Log of 2 cubed all over 13. What power are you going to raise that to? We've talked about this for a couple days now. Roots go on the bottom. That is a square root. So I'm saying to the 1 half. All right, once you get your log properties, you're in awesome shape. I would say this is log of 2 cubed, and that cubed will come in front, minus this is log of 13 to the 1 half, and that 1 half will come in front. So lastly, when I see log 2, I can replace that, it says, with a, and when I see log 13, I can replace that with b. So there we have it. There's our final answer. All right, we're ready to give you one final one to try, and we'll check it tomorrow. So here you have it. Here is your homework, or we can call it a quiz grade uh, that will be checked and graded. Uh, given log of 7 equals x and log of 3 equals y, express in terms of x, y, log of 63. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.